so at King's, we took the decision to slightly restructure the way our major gift officer roles work. So traditionally, a major gift fundraiser has not only the responsibility to go out, meet prospects, ask for gifts, but often ends up doing things like researching information about prospects, scheduling meetings, um, writing proposals, a whole series of other things which take them away from going out and actually meeting prospects. And what we found at King's was that they were becoming slightly distracted by these other things in their role, which frankly other people could be doing, and that meant they weren't hitting quite the number of meetings per month that we would want. And the single most important thing in persuading a donor to give is to see them face to face. So you can spend as much time as you like researching them, or as much time as you like on the phone trying to set up a meeting or writing a proposal, that doesn't move a gift forward. What moves a gift forward is time with a fundraiser or a representative of your institution. So we took the bold step of saying, all right, you very expensive and talented major gift fundraisers, all you're going to do is work on prospect meetings. And the other bits of your job, we are going to outsource to other people in other parts of the team, in frankly less expensive parts of the team, who would be able to deliver the function um, as well, we felt. So the things now that a major gift fundraiser doesn't do, they don't do any research on their prospects. We've got a research team and they provide, the fundraiser makes requests and they provide research data. They get help in scheduling meetings so we have meeting schedulers who work alongside the major gift fundraisers and they help scheduling meetings. This is particularly important in international trips where quite often they spend a lot of time talking to PAs trying to set up meetings. They don't arrange their travel um, or set book train tickets or any of those things. They do still have an involvement in writing proposals because they're the people that understand the donor best so they know how best to shape it but the first draft of the proposal is written by a proposal writer who's based within the com fundraising communications team so they get a lot of support which means that it's a very nice place for major gift fundraisers to work but equally we hold them to account there's nowhere to hide so if you want to be a major gift fundraiser at king's you have to be out there meeting people and you have to be bringing in money because what else are you doing there's, there's nowhere else that you can hide behind things really we are finding it works really well um, we've been doing it for a number of years now we flexed it slightly so that it used to be the case that really fundraisers had very little involvement in shaping a proposal and in reality that hasn't worked so they now have more involvement and for some key relationships the fundraiser wants to use the setting up of a meeting as a way to advance the relationship so they don't use the schedulers all the time they use them on the ones where they think actually We'll only get through to a PA, I don't need that relationship or I already have that relationship so I'm happy for someone else to schedule it. So it's sort of flexed over time having started in quite an extreme position. But for us it works. Um, I think if you're thinking about doing that there's a very obvious thing which is you need to have critical mass in terms of numbers of people. That's not a solution for a team where you've only got eight people in the team and four of those are frontline fundraisers and there just isn't the flexibility in the numbers really to make that happen but as we grew it made sense for people to specialise and certainly I've, we've seen the results uh, the number of meetings have gone up the amount of money the major gift fundraisers are raising year on year has gone up 